Hello and welcome to our Fireside Chat, brought to you by Insight and Pure Storage. With our speakers today, Chris Capusta, Practice Manager at Insight, and Paul Ferrero, Vice President Worldwide Pure as a Service at Pure Storage. I'm Amanda Sharp, Marketing Specialist at Insight, and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This webcast is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you're looking at can be completely customized. You can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. All questions from this webcast will be captured. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark icon below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. Chris, if you would, please tell us about what you do at Insight. Yes, thank you. So again, my name is Chris Capusta. I'm a practice manager with Insight, uh, focusing on the storage and, and data protection technologies. Great, thanks. And then Paul, can you tell us about, about what you do at Pure Storage? Sure, absolutely. So first of all, Chris, thank you for, for having me here today. This is, uh, I love having these conversations with Insight. Uh, again, my name is Paul Ferraro. I'm the vice president of Global Peer as a Service. I've uh, been with Pure for just over two and a half years, and I've been there since the inception of the as-a-service model. And our intention is to uh, partner very strongly with Insight and to collaborate and bring our services and our capabilities together to deliver that, that customer experience. So again, very happy to be here, Chris, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Excellent. So thank you, Paul. Looking forward to it as well. So I'll go ahead and just kick off just a little, a little bit about Insight for those unfamiliar, and then uh, just kind of what we're seeing from a, a as a service, a consumption model perspective in the market today. So for those unfamiliar with Insight, um, we are a global solutions integrator with a broad and deep uh, portfolio and relationships. You can see some of the metrics on the, on the slide here, 3,500 different partners across hardware, software, and cloud. Uh, operations in 21 countries, uh, 8,000 customer facing teammates. And, and of that uh, 4,500 of those are technical. So we have a, a, a strong architect led community, uh, financially stable and, and been around since 1988. So longevity in the business. And, you know, just kind of taking a glance at the strategic partnership between Insight and Pure. Um, again, as, as Paul mentioned, we're excited to be here together having this conversation today. Uh, you can see some of the metrics around uh, some of the business we've done together, year over year growth. Uh, we were the first uh, uh, ASP partner for all pure products. So we can take first call support on, on all pure products and, and uh, help our customers from that perspective. Uh, really big fans of the flash stack technologies, over 200 of those sold and um, pure as a service. You know, we're, we're excited about this offering, excited to, to talk about it today. Uh, big commitment to Pure in our research and innovation hubs. Uh, we have flash arrays we use for client demos. We, we take a lot of alpha and beta code into our, into our hubs and test those and provide uh, feedback to Pure. Uh, and we're, we're looking at kind of the next gen workloads, AI and, and ML workloads. We've got FlashBlade and M-Series connected to our DGX2 in our labs and our research hubs, uh, as well as Portworks and some of those next gen technologies and, and data protection technologies. Um, really great partnership between Pure and Insight. We're, we're an elite partner. Um, we were partner of the year in 2020 for Net New Logos. So, again, deep partnership between the two organizations. Um, and so, what we're kind of seeing in the market today, I think uh, I think we've all heard kind of the the story that this slide paints here, but. Uh, really, in 2020 and going into 2021, there's a lot of pressure on, on CIOs to control costs and improve efficiencies. And in fact, we see you know, roughly 71% of those are, are planning to reduce costs while still having a, a top priority on, on technology implementation and transformation. So almost a conflicting mindset there from, from that perspective. And we're really seeing a, a, an overall shift from save to grow to save to transform. Um, and, and technology really becomes a key lever uh, in that type of mindset. Public cloud is, is still increasing. 92% of companies have or are in the process of putting workloads in the public cloud, yet 69% of that have higher than average cloud, higher than expected, excuse me, cloud costs. 
and uh, automation, reducing waste, uh, introducing more elastic designs really are the top top optimization measures planned for, for 2021. So as a service, I um, want to kind of just talk about some of the different uh, kind of procurement methods or ways of consuming or purchasing storage and, and just to kind of uh, put some terminology out there for what we're going to discuss today. Uh, probably most are familiar with the traditional CapEx model. I, I buy everything up front. I size for three to five years based upon depreciation models. You know, there is a, there's a higher initial outlay with this type of purchasing model. Um, probably a likely lowered long-term cost. And then Pure has put uh, programs like Evergreen in, into the market to really help make sure that when you do buy in that CapEx model, it's not a forklift upgrade every time you need to refresh that hardware. Uh, OPEX is, was kind of the next transition we saw there. Typically a lease with some FASB rules of, for reporting around that. Uh, there is a minimum spend usually required and it's, it's lower monthly costs, but you can really only flex up in those types of models. Uh, there is a, a base, a minimum that you have to purchase typically in a lease and um, every, everything else like a lease, it's, it's usually more expensive in the long run. And then we start to see the, the as a service models come into play and, and one like as peers of services we're gonna talk about today, but what we're starting to see here is lower initial outlay of, of funds. So we, we can flex up or down, we get flexibility much like a cloud model, if you will. Uh, lower cost if, if the workload is highly variable, if, if, you know, if you have a static workload that doesn't change much, maybe, maybe not uh, as a service is a good methodology for that, but um, it says here it could be higher if workload is static. But the important thing here is really this is not a lease. Typically in an OPEX lease model, you still hold title on that gear. You're still responsible for reporting around it. Uh, as a service, it's it's purely a consumption a consumption model as a service. There's, there's no uh, specialized reporting or anything that has to be done from an accounting perspective. And then, you know, just to compare it, cloud consumption. Probably the lowest initial outlay, because most of the cloud providers are in that race to the bottom from a cost perspective. Uh, obviously, the most flexible of the models, because there is infinite capacity, uh, so to speak. You Obviously, there's a cost for that, but you can flex up and down, much like that as a service model we saw on-prem. And then it could be the lowest if you managed your workloads properly. And that really involves sizing workloads and understanding what's a good fit for public cloud, what's a good fit for for staying on-prem and maybe looking at it as an as-a-service model um, could be the highest pricing if things are not managed properly. Financial operations becomes a really big, uh, a really big important service as you're looking at uh, moving to the cloud and cloud consumptions and uh, and those costs. And then there's there's some quote unquote I'll say hidden costs that go with that as well because typically if if you don't have a direct route to the cloud provider, there is ingress and egress fees. There could be API charges, et cetera, that go along with storing that data. So um, not not just the physical cost of storing, but the physical the, the cost of transmitting and, and deleting or storing data in the cloud as well. And so why storage as a service? Why programs like Peer as a service? Um, it's a consumption model like public cloud. You know, we're, we're seeing there was a big shift to public cloud in the beginning. Now we're starting to see some of those workloads repatriated on-prem and, and realistically hybrid cloud is probably the future for a majority of us out there. Uh, but I still wanna have that kind of cloud consumption like model. Uh, I wanna know what I'm paying up front. I wanna pay for what I use. And I want to have that flexibility and agility that the public cloud brings uh, from a from a storage perspective. Uh, financial tool, uh, no capex purchases. So again, no no sizing for for three to five years in advance. No paying for storage I may or may not use based upon what my growths look like or or undersizing. No assets on the books, and then those flexible uh, opex terms to really avoid the the FASB lease rules. And it's a it's a bridge to a cloud strategy. Um, again, we, we can purchase capacity on premises, hosted or in the public cloud, and I can rebalance capacity. So as my workloads change, as I move things into the public cloud or maybe move workloads back on prem, I can flex up and flex down this, these uh, storage offerings to make sure I'm, I'm paying for exactly what I consume, uh, I've yet still have the flexibility to, to move up or down as my needs change, as my workloads change, as my, as my business needs change. And it's, it's, a, it's a risk reduction as well. 
uh, reduces financial risks. It, it obviously simplifies capacity planning because I can flex up or flex down as needed. I'm only paying for what I need from a capacity perspective, so I don't have to worry about, you know, did I buy enough storage to to for all the projects I have coming down the pipeline? And it's just really that that flexibility, that uh, you know, that cloud-like flexibility that we're seeing, you know, kind of the market move towards. Uh, we can we can we can mimic that on-prem and give our business the same agility. You know, on premises that we could in the public cloud. So now that we've kind of um, set the stage for for the different models and, and kind of what we're going to be talking about here, Paul, I'm going to turn it over to you and, and kind of let you guide us through the pure as a service offering and, and some background on that. Thank you, Chris. A lot of what you're saying absolutely resonates. Uh, specifically, the elements around not being a lease, and we're going to talk about these things. This slide here is what I like to call my 50. 50,000 foot slide. So if we kind of go around the cloud here, starting from the bottom left, um, I'll describe what peer as a service is, and then we're going to go deeper into what peer as a service is, and then we'll do a quick recap. But this is a great slide to start with. So number one, peer as a service is an unlimited on-demand model. There are SLAs, but the right SLAs. Um, we have a service catalog with a, with a number of tiers to best suit a workload. And of course, evergreen architecture is foundational with Pure as a Service. It's the next evolution of Pure. And we're going to talk about that in great detail as well. Um, to go further, cloud operations, the cloud experience and cloud economics, everything that Pure has done from a technology perspective has reduced costs uh, from power, cooling, from labor force, um, for optimizing data center footprint, all of those things combined create what we call cloud economics. And the strategy of cloud economics is being able to deliver those technologies on-prem, in a colo, and in the cloud. Um, we are all about business outcomes. Our focus is business outcomes. Uh, we're not talking storage anymore. We're talking about the business outcome, the desires of the business to achieve something very specifically. And partnering with Insight, these things can happen. Uh, I mentioned that is a true OpEx model. So three things that make it true OpEx. Number one, substantive substitution that allows us to replace components. You can't do that with a lease. Number two, we own the assets. And number three, we can't sell you the assets. Those three things make it a true OpEx model. If those three things are not present in, a, in an as-a-service model that you're considering, it is not true OpEx. Uh, our desire is to make everything simple, fast, everything fast. Not, the not just the technology, but the service, the response to the service, the delivery of the service. And of course, what's incredibly important is transparency and predictability. Again, we're asset managing the environment, so our ability to be able to provide you through Pure One seamless reporting about consumption utilization to capacity plan and performance management, it's all there from a transparency perspective. And of course, agility and efficiency, reducing business risks, and zero tech debt. What's really important to understand in the way that we look at this in the industry, we define technical debt as legacy capabilities still depreciating on your books or perhaps you're paying maintenance on them and the very resources with skills to manage them, we consider that technical debt. With peer as a service and peer technology and partnership with Insight, you never have tech debt. Tech debt is a thing of the past. You are always contemporary. And of course, flexing up and flexing down and then in the bottom, we talk about everything is included. Everything is included in the unit rate. And we're going to talk about the service catalog in a minute. And of course, no exit penalties. If you decide at the end of the contract that peer as a service is not right for you, you simply migrate off the environment. Uh, there's no obligation to buy the equipment. There's no obligation to continue with the service. We call it a champagne problem. <laughs> so if we look at peer as a service from a flexible hybrid cloud perspective, we deliver peers of service with, with, with our infrastructure in partnership with Insight on-prem in your data center. We also provide it in a colo, and we also provide it in the cloud using a product called CBS. CBS is included with our performance tier. And what's important to understand here is in the cloud, you have a contract perhaps with AWS or Azure or Google. Because our technology is enterprise grade, we dedupe, we compress, we thin provision, we encrypt. So therefore you can move your data across a multi-cloud environment all under the same subscription. So it's pretty powerful. If we then look at our service catalog, 
What's very important to remember is we look at things from a consumption perspective. We don't think capacity, data, not storage. The model is price times data times term. It changes the dynamic where all of you are thinking about your data and the policies that govern your data. You're no longer capacity planning. You're looking for those rich business outcomes. So if we look at our service catalog on the left, services, the tier, an example workload, relative performance, minimum commitment, and minimum term, I'll start at the bottom. Our minimum term is one year. We can go two, three, four, five, six years, your choice. In addition to that, the commitment for each one of these tiers is 50 TIBs per data center per tier. So you can start base entry very, very low and scale when it suits your business. There's not a high cost of entry. It's a very low cost of entry. Of course, the relative performance is spelled out here in terms of 20X, 10X, 3X. And of course, if you go further, you can see the various types of workloads that support these tiers. Again, unified fast file object, ultra and premium, and then block. On-prem, public cloud, ultra premium performance and capacity. The lion's share of our subscriptions, uh, I would say maybe 90% of all, our, all of our subscriptions are performance because uh, most of our customers want the ability to run CBS in the cloud and unify the overall operating experience and unify the operating model through APIs across that multi-cloud environment. And of course, your workloads can move back and forth and you're simply consuming as you need to. So again, think data, do not think capacity and think consumption. A very different model than CapEx. There is no comparison to CapEx. This is a very, very different model. Um, again, just a little more detail on myself. I spent the last 15 years in financial services. So this type of model, which was developed here at Pure, is as a result of all of the rich feedback we get from customers like yourselves, uh, who have experienced these challenges in how you manage storage services. And we believe that we've gone a long way in partnering with Insight to eliminate all those legacy problems of the past, to make it very easy for you to onboard, very easy for you to grow and consume the service, and then make it even easier to exit if you choose to exit. That was a priority for me, being able to exit if you choose to do something different. And I think that's game changing. So if we go further, let's talk about on-demand as a primary usage model. So there's two concepts that need to be understood. There's reserve commit, which is a discounted rate it's, as I said before, a minimum commitment based on the tier. And if you look at this diagram here, you'll see at the very bottom, there's a low point of entry to start the subscription, which is significantly discounted. And then over the course of the term of the contract, if you choose to increase your reserve commitment and get that discounted rate as you consume, you can do that anytime you'd like. You can do it in the second month, third month. You can do it in the eighth month, the 12th month, the 17th month. And then let's say at the end of the term, the 24th month, this is an example of a two-year contract, you can choose to terminate your contract or you could renew it and extend it. And to go further, you also have the ability to consume on-demand services, which we call our standard rate. Um, there's no commitment for that capacity, for that usage. And we measure it three times a day and average it. So if you consume it for one day for a little bit, we're only charging you for that one day of consumption and we're billing you quarterly in arrears. And the reason why we do that is because in this example, you might be consuming and consuming the on-demand and then let's say you stay up there, you don't come back down again. We always give you the ability to control your costs and have that fin financial flexibility to then commit coterminous to the end of the contract term and reduce your cost in any month as you go. Many customers also choose to pay the on-demand rate for months at a time because it's part of their business and they choose to do that. So again, very game-changing in that, in that way. So if we talk about the, the operational benefits, there are four major operational benefits. There are some tasks that you're outsourcing, capacity management, performance management, monitoring, reporting. You know, we look at typical retained uh, FTEs savings is about 40%. And if we look at operational simplicity, we're looking at a 10 to one ratio or even greater. As a former customer, 
where I deployed Pure in a very big way, I had one developer managing my entire fleet. That's very, very different than you'll find with other technologies. Uh, and then to go further, Pure One management plane, deep integration for ITSM integration, which again, Insight can do all these things for you. That's why it's just a wonderful marriage between what we do and what Insight does. Fewer changes to manage, it's just so simple to manage end to end. And of course, operational flexibility, flex up, flex down, everything is included and there are continuous upgrades with the service. There's no concern to accumulate technical debt. And of course, mitigated commercial risk, Pure owns the assets, Pure provides SLAs, there's no exit penalties, so therefore there's no required budget as a result. Let's go further. Let's talk about the four simple measures, which we call premium support case handling with SLAs, availability, capacity, and performance. So we like to keep it really simple. Of course, Insight, in working with Insight and Pure, you can add additional SLAs based on your requirements. What we believe that these four were critical for a successful model. Having been a part of many full managed outsources and large transformational programs, sometimes you get weighed down by too many SLAs that are not meaningful. We believe that these are the most meaningful SLAs. So let's talk about Pure as a Service again, a little more granular, sort of a recap. Number one, think consumption, not capacity, data, not storage. Uh, Pure as a Service is an unlimited subscription model unlimited on-demand subscription model in a colo, in a data center, in the cloud. For portfolio products, which means anything is included, everything is included. Again, on-prem, public cloud, hybrid cloud, anywhere. Um, we charge for the data which is written into the service. And of course, we have SLAs uh, based for the service as we described. Evergreen technology is part of the overall solution, which eliminates that tech debt and allows us to always be contemporary. So as new capabilities come to market, we bring those capabilities to you. And of course, it's a true OPEX model. So it's not a lease. Again, subsidy substitution, we own the asset, we can't sell them to you. Those three elements make it a true OPEX model. And of course, a classic elastic cloud economics. So it's very low risk for you. We take all the risks. And that's a big fundamental change in the industry. In the past, you take the risks. When you bought something, you were stuck with it. Now, we take those risks. Minimum requirement is one year with a very slow, a very low entry of 50 terabytes. And of course, it's very easy to sign up. The contracting process with Insight and Pure is very simple and elegant, very straightforward. And of course, just to make it really clear, Pure as a service is not a managed service and it's not an outsource. However, with the rich capabilities that Insight provides, Insight can layer in and wrap that around peers of service and make, it, and make it even more elegant and more simple and provide those capabilities above and beyond what we do. That's how we go to market and we wanna keep it simple. And uh, we think this is a very simple, elegant model. So with that said, Chris, I know I went kind of quickly but I think we made all these major points. Um, Absolutely. Very jacked up about peers of service, very jacked up about partnering with Insight. Um, you know, we've done a number of these uh, webinars over the years and the adoption has been absolutely spectacular. So let's talk about the promotion. So there are two promotions, right? Number one, there's a S'mores kit that you get for attending today. And then if you sign up for a meeting with Pure and Insight to discuss our capabilities, um, you receive the solo stove, which you can then roast. I'm assuming you could then roast your s'mores, make, which I make think your s'mores on. <laughs> you can put your s'mores on there, right? I'd love to get one yeah. of these. So uh, Camille or Amanda, I'd love to get one of these. Uh, okay, so um, Danielle, why don't we bring it back over to you or Amanda, we'll bring it back over to you to, to do some Q&A. What do you think? Great. So we've got a couple questions that have come in, Paul and Chris. The first one, um, this one might be more for you, Paul, is how does Evergreen apply to Pure as a Service? So Evergreen is foundational. So because Evergreen allows for non-disruptive upgrades for Tier 1 workloads, when you subscribe to a tier, if we are not meeting the performance SLA of that tier, we will upgrade those controllers at no cost, period. 
Next question. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. And then how long does it take to get things up and running with Pure as a service? Well, that depends on the customer. So um, we believe we have a service start date. So when a customer subscribes to Peer as a Service, um, we work with them to define what that service start date would be. So the technology can be normally, most of our customers are subscribing to a four week service start date from the date that they sign the contract, that we deliver the infrastructure and have the service up and running within four weeks. That can be, that could be a shorter time or that could be a longer time. It's all based on the customer's requirements. All right. And then another one is, do I have to use both CBS and on-premises for a hybrid implementation for Pure as a Service? You don't. But we highly encourage it because the CBS um, software, which is essentially our flash array technology running in a uh, public cloud environment has rich capabilities that highly integrate APIs and increase the operational efficiencies as a result of that. Instrumentation, APIs, all of these things, right? So it's included in the model. So we highly encourage um, our customers to use it. And many of our customers subscribe to Peers of Service for that capability. Um, you don't have to use it, but it's included in the model. So let's say that you subscribe to, uh, let's hypothetically say 200 TIBs in a data center. Well, and you receive the CBS licenses with that, that 200 TIBs could also be in the cloud and you can move it back and forth as part of a reserve commit or part of an on-demand implementation uh, or all the above. So we wanna make it very, very simple and elegant. Um, very simple and elegant. Hope that answers the question. Great. Great, thank you. And this next one is kind of maybe more of a comment, but um, 12 month terms for the consumption model terms, they're commenting that it's very attractive um, where they've seen maybe others have a 36 month, three, 36 month minimum, um, which kind of feels like more than a, of a lease to customers. But just... Yeah, yeah, and, and I would agree with whoever made that comment, I would agree with that. One of my objectives at Pure was to solve all the problems that storage administrators and storage engineers and owners of storage and data services have had for the last 30 years, which was maybe I only need this for a year, right? And, and maybe I don't need to buy more. Um, and many times um, we've seen it for many years and I've also experienced this is sometimes my engineering team would engineer a solution and we deploy it and we undersized it or we oversized it. Now, what do we do now? Right. So think of peers of service as being clay. It's something that you can mold and shape over time based on your changing conditions. That's what's important because that only then delivers on your business outcomes. So the one year is the minimum with a very low commit. And of course, um, we have many customers that sign up for one year and some of them are six months in and decide to extend for two and three years. So I think it's a great thing. It's a great thing. I've even considered maybe making it six months, to be honest with you because we really want to solve the problems of our customers. Well, and, and Paul, I think you really touched on some important points on a previous slide. You know, as, as, we're, as we're out there talking to customers and going through kind of storage sizing and capacity planning, the, the areas they struggle most with on the operational front is that, you know, when am I going to run out of storage? How much do I need to buy? And, and how do I monitor this to make sure that I'm, I'm getting adequate performance? And and it's storage is not the bottleneck. And I, I know Pure One has some great capabilities in that area, but the, the consumption model, the as a service model, just, it takes the guesswork out of it. You you buy by the SLA, you know, all of the capacity with the buffer, you flex up, you flex down, you don't have to worry about, you know, kind of when am I going to run out? How do I plan for the future? So, you know, even from that operational front, as you touched on, we're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of success at a, a, you know, kind of changing the conversation of what um, operational admin struggle with today. No, I agree with you. So Chris, let's talk about that a little bit further, Chris. So you're, you're out there, sure. right? You're talking to customers all day long. You know, what's your, what's your perspective on the overall as a service industry? You think it'll continue to adopt and continue to move in that direction? What are your thoughts there? Absolutely. I, I mean, we're, we're out there helping customers transform. And, and as part of that is obviously hybrid cloud models. And as, as they move to that cloud, 
uh, the, the public clouds, we, we look back at their on-prem resources and say, hey, how can we modernize this and how can we change the way that you're that you're that you're using and consuming these resources because because modernization brings about a lot there's additional security with more modern infrastructure um, there's automation there's better operational efficiencies so the the conversation that we're really having up front is how do we how do we take all of that legacy debt to, as we mentioned earlier you have on-prem and how do we modernize that and possibly even consume it in the same way you're doing that public cloud model now because that's that's the next part of that conversation is really, okay, I'm, I'm paying by the drip, so to speak, from the public cloud perspective. I need that same type of experience on, on prem. I want to uniformly purchase storage, no matter where, no matter where the storage lies. And, and so, you know, the, as a service model is a great way to refresh a lot of that, that aging hardware on prem without having to lay out the capital upfront to do that. Uh, and again, it's it's all about having that flexibility. So I no longer need to plan three to five years in advance. You know, if, if the business uh, does an acquisition or, or goes through significant change, I don't have to worry about, well, gee, I didn't buy enough storage to account for this. And now I've got to make emergency purchases or or maybe look at more powerful controllers or all of the types of exercises that we we help customers through in those types of scenarios. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of out of buying and, and uh, consuming storage. And then uh, to your point, you know, the next part of those conversations is generally, I almost want that white glove experience that I get from the public cloud. I, I need to, you know, do more with less is a, is a phrase we've heard for many years now in the industry. And I, I think, you know, the past couple of years have accelerated that even further. You know, now it's a chance where, where Insight can come in and, and say, you know, with Pure as a service, if, is it managed services you're looking for on top of that? So leveling up, you know, your employees internally to to things, you know, no longer managing storage day to day, no longer provisioning and, and troubleshooting and all of the kind of storage admin tasks that uh, that take a lot of time and maybe don't have a lot of high value. You know, Insight can take those on and and help the help the customer really take those resources and and redeploy them to things that are more beneficial to the business. So it, you know, it, it offers a lot from the customer perspective. It's it's a better way of looking at purchasing and consuming, and it just makes things easier you know, all around. So I I definitely it's my long winded way of saying I definitely see it uh, continuing. I, I see the interest picking up, especially as more and more move into that hybrid cloud model and and want that uh, easy consumption experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Chris, you know, I look at it and I, I have this conversation with um, customers all the time and they ask me, like, simplify it again. Continue to simplify. Let's talk. Let's right. talk. So what I always say is that as a service model provides services wholesale to the customer and then ultimately working with insight and insight layering its capabilities, ultimately, at the end of the day, the customer is retailing it back to their consumers and they're layering in other costs. They're layering in the compute. They're laying in hosting costs. Mm -hmm. They're layering in ITSM costs, incident, problem, change, request, fulfillment. They're layering those things in. So when we look at what we're trying to do here, we're trying to reduce the retail cost, which is generally higher than the wholesale, and bring that retail down so it's closer to what the wholesale cost will be. So you look at cloud economics, Right, the ability to reduce data center space, solid state, reducing power, cooling requirements, right. reduce, reduce the labor requirements. You reduce all those things and plus only pay for what you use and make navigational course corrections as you go. It, 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 it creates a very different atmosphere and you hit it, right? Is now you can take your most critical resources and have them go focus on all those other things. All those other right. things and not have to worry about these things anymore. And that's contemporary. That's that's the future. That's the future. Exactly. And and, and I think we had a we had a good question come in that I think we should touch on as well and and it's an important one. You know, can you convert a, a current pure customer to pure as a service? Yes. <laughs> and, and I, I believe the answer to that is, and Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the answer to that is, as as the support comes up on the on the hardware they own, maybe through capex or or whatever, uh, that is the time they can convert to the as a service model. Well, there's a, there's a number of ways. So that's okay. that's absolutely one of them. So let's say you have a customer that wants to renew and they want to renew into peers of service. We will most definitely do that. That's number one. Number two, let, let's say that there's a customer that has a third party technology. They have pure CapEx and they also have 
those third-party capabilities or third-party technologies, EMC or NetApp or whoever it might be. Um, we, we even have bought back those assets and utilized it back to the customer and helped them migrate away from those assets onto peers of service. Um, there's also the scenario in which a customer is, is in a longer depreciation cycle because they made a peers, they made a storage capital purchase with Pure and they came to us and they say, listen, we'd like you to buy back the Pure assets that we just purchased and put us into an as a service model. So we have, you know, there are so many different ways that over the last two years, our customers have come to us and asked us to help them. And all of the above, you know, we look at it at a case by case basis to make sure it's it makes sense. We have many customers that are buying capital and they're also doing pure as a service. So there's a combination of things kind of along the way. But the answer is yes. No, excellent question. Thank you for clarifying. Do we have any other questions here? Paul and Chris, those are all of the questions that have come in at the moment. Very good. So Chris, you know, one of the thing I wanted to touch on, which I think is very meaningful, and I know that you, um, you, you've touched on it as well, which is when you look at going on a transformational journey, when you look at transforming infrastructure or transforming a business, you've got digital transformation, you've got business transformation. And, you know, one of the things I talk about all the time with internally within Pure and also with customers is that when you move to an as a service model, there's a transformation needs to take place inside of the company mm -hmm. that is selling it. So Insight has gone through its own transformation internally to be able to gear itself to provide these capabilities, just like Pure has. And our customers, they need to change the way that they're doing business as well. And that's a journey. And when you go through any transformational journey, the most important thing is everybody comes along on the voyage. They all come along on that trip, is that it's not something that happens overnight. What's really critical is that the very people that support these infrastructures and support these business processes, that they need to be highly integrated into that journey. Um, so I have a lot of customers that say, hey, I want to do as a service right now. And then I'll talk to them about how they manage their P&L and how they depreciate assets. And they'll have to change those processes to be able to do that. And they're all in on it, but it's just, you have to consider all of these things. And uh, many customers discover that moving towards OpEx models allows them to free up cash to go do th all those other things they wish they did. Those cybersecurity initiatives with Insight, you know, DevOps or other types of integration programs mm -hmm. with Insight. I mean, that's what we're talking about here, right? It's the money you would have spent on this before, you now have available to go and enhance other areas of your business. No, absolutely. Very, uh, very good point. And I mean, we've, we've heard a lot of, of you know, with, with all the uncertainty that's been going on, you know, kind of overly sweating assets and trying to hold on to that capital and, and not to make those big capital purchases. And, and to your point, this is an excellent way of, of modernizing, of, of being more agile and yet not having to, not having to spend all that cash up front. So completely agree. Very good. Well, Chris, absolute pleasure, pleasure talking with you today. I know that you're a Boston Red Sox fan. I'm a Yankee fan, so we could work through that. I think we did. Um, but overall, if we can um, overcome that, anyone can. So <laughs> anything, anything could be overcome. And I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to uh, meeting uh, all of our customers here and uh, continue the conversation. So uh, a lot of opportunity to, to help a lot of customers, which I'm very excited about. So thank you for your time. Yeah, Paul, today. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Danielle, thank you, Chris Amanda, and Paul. Yep. Thank you, Chris and Paul, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.